I am your host of today's show, Drew Joyner. Hello and welcome to everyone who is watching currently in the studio. I am thankful that you're here with me today. In today's featured segment, we're going to be talking about not just one, but two pairs of GH Bass Weijin Tassel Loafers. I call that Weijin Tassel Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just admit it up front. I've caught a bit of the Weijin tasseled loafer bug. For some reason, these shoes are speaking to me like they've never spoken to me before in their entire life. And they're talking good too. <laughs> if you enjoy this video at any moment, you know what you should do. And without further ado, Let's get into the review. All right, enough kidding around. Let's get serious. I'm excited to give you guys this review. All right, so the first pair we're gonna look at are the Layton Kilty 90s Weijin Tasseled Loafers. One of the things I was pleasantly surprised by when I first purchased these loafers back a few weeks ago on sale was the presentation of the box. I have to tip my hat off to GH Bass Reason. They do a really, really great job, in my opinion, compared to other unboxing experiences that I've un unboxed, whether it be sneakers or other loafers. They really make it feel like you're unboxing a special type of shoe during the unboxing experience. These Weijins, is, is that how people say it? <laughs> we, these Weijins? Anyways, <laughs> the Layton 90s Kilty Weijins aren't your typical purist classic loafer, even if they fit that bill and are so, so beautiful upon unboxing. I would say that the outsole of this shoe takes a much more modern approach when it comes to footwear than what the original loafers were intended to be. You have genuine leather on the upper. The tasseled kilty detailing on the forefoot or the vamp of the shoe is quite beautiful if you ask me. And the box comes with an additional shoehorn to help get your foot inside the shoe so you don't crease up the heel of the shoe. When it comes to GH Bass Weijin, there's an incredibly deep and long history when it comes to shoemaking and when it comes to making loafers in particular. On the bottom of each shoe, it even says that it's established in 1876 in Maine, USA. As much as I researched about the company, I think the things that you should take away that are most important in 2021 is that GH Bass Weijin have been making shoes for a very long time. They're a legacy shoe making company. And while they have been doing this for a long time, at this point in their existence, they have outsourced a lot of their manufacturing for cheaper labor and just two cheaper countries such as El Salvador and Mexico. All right, let's get these shoes on feet and let me talk about quality and sizing a little bit. When it comes to sizing, it actually took me quite a long time to make the decision on which shoe size should I order. Most, if not all sites that carry this Layton tasseled loafer come in UK sizing. And so as an American, I had to do basically trigonometry to figure out which size works best for my foot. So for these, I went with a UK 10. Typically I'm a US size 11. And for what GH Bass Weijin states on their kind of sizing chart that a UK 10 is a US 11. So that is true to size for me in my US sizing. But when I compared Bass Weijin sizing chart to just online and other sizing charts, a lot of people say, and a lot of people reference a UK 10 fitting like a US 10 and a half. So having these on feet right now, I would say that they fit relatively nicely. Uh, there's a little bit of room. They're not broken in. So obviously the, obviously the shoe will hopefully adhere to my foot a little bit more as I wear them more. The sizing is a little bit confusing. I say go true to size or go down half a size. One of the things, especially with the 90s Layton, is the fact that it is incredibly light. I mean, compared to the Doc Martin Adrian loafers, which I'm wearing right now as I'm talking about the shoes, these feel really, really light, and the leather quality is a little bit different than what I've experienced with the Adrian loafers, right? The leather quality feels a little bit, just not as rigid, um, not as heavy if that's a way that I can describe it. It feels, it feels a little bit underwhelming when I first picked these up and put them on, but they feel really nice and comfortable on foot. So one of the things I wanna add, I definitely put an insole in these shoes and it did feel a little bit more snug. Only reason why I did that is because I was getting a little bit of heel slippage 
and my foot is long enough but it's so narrow that sometimes it doesn't snag the back of the shoe to pull it up if that makes sense so i added a little bit of you know insole to help it and i think that that's going to make it fit more true to where i would want it to fit something to consider for yourself these are the 90s latens we'll see what i do with the mocks I think stylistically, these are really, really beautiful. You can't go wrong with a loafer that looks as classy and as clean as this. Even though this is the 90s rendition, I feel like it still has a very rustic and kind of old feeling to it. An aesthetic that for me, branching outside of sneakers, oh man, I really, really enjoy this. I do have to say I was most excited about ordering these when I placed my order. These to me, from a stylistic standpoint, are really, really beautiful. I really like the outsole. I thought it was gonna be just a little bit more substantial and a little bit more rugged and last the test of time a little bit more than these right here, which we'll talk about in a second. I would have to say that the quality of the 90s Layton feels a little bit cheaper than what I expected, and that's something that you should take into consideration. But this video is nowhere near close to being done. Let's take a look at these things right here. Let's talk about the second pair of loafers that I acquired. These are the GH Bass Layton Mock Kilty Tassels Loafers. Jeez, that's a long freaking name. <laughs> These are what GH Bass Weijin dubs as a modern day American classic. And they definitely look it and feel it. I think what you get with these is a really, really beautiful loafer that is classic, that is preppy, and just is made with a, a level of kind of attention to detail that you don't get with a lot of cheap alternatives. These once again have genuine leather on the upper of the shoe. Outsole of the shoe is also genuine leather. And through and through, after having the 90s Layton in my hand and having these in my hand, these feel heavier, a little bit more substantial, leather feels a little bit nicer, and the price tag typically reflects this quality. I also really like the shape of this shoe. It has a really interesting sloping effect that I feel like is really, really classy and beautiful. Everything I say is classy and beautiful, I guess. <laughs> of course, you have the tassels and the kilty styling, which are just so buttery and so amazing. I mean, I can look at this shoe all day long and never get bored. All right, the details are absolutely stunning. Let's get these things on feet. So unfortunately for these, I went with a UK 10 and a half, which for GH Bass Weijin, they recommend that you go true to size and I'm a size 11. And for them, a 10 and a half in the UK is a US 11 and a half, while other charts may say something different. I can definitely feel the room in these a little bit more so than the 90s Layton Kilty Tasseled Loafers. But I would give the same recommendation for these as I would the other loafers, go true to size or go half a size down potentially, just because you want that shoe to really fit really snugly around your foot and if you have a heel if you have heel slippage if you have movement in the shoe while you're walking around it's just going to make the experience a little bit less enjoyable you won't feel as confident and you won't be able to style them in the way you'd want to and just be able to walk around and live life normally your your shoe would be coming off your foot so i also put the insoles into the mock kilties and as a result the shoe fit a little bit more snug but going up a size a half a size excuse me was the wrong decision i think these are really really beautiful man if i could i would keep these but i just can't there's no way the sizing is just a little bit too big but if you're someone who's looking for these go true to size maybe even go half a size down these are really really beautiful some of my favorite loafers definitely that i've ever acquired and i've only acquired a few but make sure to go true to size and yeah these are really really beautiful One of the things I definitely want to reiterate when it comes to this loafer in particular is the quality compared to this pair right here. Um, it's kind of night and day, and I think it's as a result, it's kind of night and day, and I think it's because of the outsoles of this shoe um, that this just feels so much heavier than this. You have a leather outsole that obviously you can see right there, and this is probably just made up of a foam material. In all honesty, what do you guys think? Which pair do you kind of have more of a preference for? And I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about where I was able to get these, how I was able to get these on sale. So both of these, I got these on sale for $70, I think, 
each and so typically the retail of this one is $170 and this one is around $120 so you can find these on sale let's talk about it so one of the things i'm really appreciating about the loafer marketplace in 2021 is the ability to find loafers like this on sale at a really good price so i was able to buy both of these from the website from the retailer mr porter and if you're not familiar with mr porter they have an array of different brands that they carry within their website and gh bass Weijin happens to be one of those. And so I was kind of just looking around for loafers cause I have the docks on literally right now. And as a result, I end up finding myself on a page where these were on sale for about 60, 50% off. And I was like, man, that's a really, really good deal. I feel like I won't be able to find that again. And so if you can take your time in terms of buying these pairs of shoes, search out deals search out opportunities to actually find them on sale because i know that they're available not only did i get these two on sale i also got the adrian loafers on sale for 65 dollars and so i just feel like right now with the current state of the local loafer with the current state of the loafer marketplace you're going to be able to find loafers for below retail very easily if you're patient and if you search through the right retailers if you are a gh bass Weijin like fanatic if you love this shoe and you love talking about it this is your time to shine leave a comment down below about what your opinion is on these loafers maybe you don't like these loafers because they're made poorly compared to others my only comparison right now is to the dog martin adrian loafers which i will be making a comparison video very soon and if you're someone who has any questions about these loafers please leave those questions down in the comment section or you can dm me on instagram at drew joiner underscore i answer 100 percent well 99 percent of all the dms that i get so send me a dm subscribe if you're new i would love to have you be a part of this community that i'm trying to continue to cultivate and build and enrich the lives of other people man videos like this just get me so excited because i know a lot of people have been asking me about this shoe in particular and i'm glad i could help you guys out and and purchasing maybe your first pair of loafers as always i'm gonna spread in peace love and positivity in 2021 so that means i'm spreading peace love and positivity to you wherever you are in the world have a wonderful rest of your day i'll see you guys later peace man went from a certified loafer boy to a dignified loafer god your boy has come a long way Who's ready for the Adrian Lowe for comparison? Talk to me. <laughs> uh. Thank you.